Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Brian from Kingdom Martini Cross Nation. And for today's episode, uh, we're basically going to be going over all uh, all five of the new four Teller EX Plus medals that we currently have in the shop. Now, I believe the only one we have missing at the moment are Gula and Ased, but uh, they're pretty much the same exact thing as Envy that we have right now. Uh, so I'm just gonna go ahead and talk about all five. Uh, I'll be giving you guys advice, my thoughts as to whether or not they're worth pulling for, um, as well as the fact that if like you had to pull uh, one of the full tellers, which which one would you rather go for type of thing. Uh, so that's what we'll be covering in today's content. Now, before we go over the actual banners themselves and I give banner advice, uh, let's go ahead and quickly go over what each of the medals actually do first uh, before anything else. Okay, so the first thing worth noting is the fact that all the foretellers have overwrite okay and this is actually that's actually pretty good okay all the foretellers have overwrite um and there's actually not too much differences between each of the foretellers the only ones that are actually majorly different are going to be between hd ava ex plus and hd era ex plus so just to start off with let's go ahead and take a look at hd ava ex plus so so ava is a magic upright metal tier eight costs four gauges is aoe has a seven star multiplier of a 25.97 to a 34.15, and this is what she does. With overwrite, for one turn, she sets your general strength, upright strength, and magic strength to seven. She sets your PSM defense, not strength, defense to seven. Uh, she provides a plus 100% uh, guilt buff. She sets the target's general defense, upright defense, and magic defense to 7, as well as sets their PSM strength, the opponent's PSM strength, to minus 3. She provides plus 2 gauges, provides plus 2 enemy counters, and does more damage the higher your HP, as well as the fact that she also has a special ability where she converts the next medal after her into a magic medal. HD Era EX Plus is very similar to Ava, just slightly different. His stats are exactly the same as Ava's, the only difference being a slight difference in his ability, uh, but we'll go ahead and read the whole thing. Where for, whole, for one turn, he does have Overwrite, where he sets your general strength, upright strength, and power strength to seven, your speed defense to seven, um, whereas Ava was PSM defense to seven. So Era only provides speed defense to seven. Uh, raises your guilt buff to 120%, whereas Ava was 100%. Sets the target's general defense, upright defense, and PSM defense to minus 7. So, Ira is the only one that sets all uh, attribute defense to minus 7. And sets the opponent's speed strength to minus 3. Whereas Ava set PSM strength to minus 3. He gives 2 gauges, 2 counters, uh, does more damage with higher HP, and he also has the new mechanic where he turns the next metal after him into a power attribute. So just to clarify, the main differences between HD Era and Ava is the fact that Era provides a max PSM defense debuff, whereas Ava doesn't, but she does provide a max uh, PSM defense buff. Okay, so they're kind of opposites of each other. Otherwise, they do the exact same thing for their respective attributes. HD Envy EX Plus is the exact same thing as Ava. The only difference between her and Ava is the fact that she doesn't provide uh, PSM defense buff. She only provides uh, a power defense of seven, that's it. And of course, she only provides a power strength debuff as well and not PSM strength debuff. Uh, it's also worth noting too that HD Envy her ability, her override ability, lasts for three turns compared to the one turn that Ava and Ira have. And if we go ahead and take a look at Gula, Gula does the exact same thing for his speed attribute, as well as the fact that Ased also does the exact same thing for their power attributes. So Ased, Envy, and Gula all last for three turns. Uh, whereas Ira and Ava only last for one turn. All right, so now that we've gotten over all of the four towers and what their abilities are and such, let's quickly go ahead and take a look at the banners themselves and what they give out. So as of right now, we currently only have three of the five four teller banners within the shop, although I'm assuming that we'll get the other two fairly soon. Every single one of the four teller banners is exactly the same, except that they 
uh, offer a different foreteller, of course, if you make it to the 10 mercy pool. The only thing worth knowing from each of them is the fact that you're guaranteed their respective trait medal every single pull. You're guaranteed a tier five seven star medal with a random skill attached to it, as well as three magic mirrors and 10 VIP coins, limited VIP coins, I should say, for the limited uh, VIP boards that we currently have for the entire month. Now, the main thing that I feel like is worth mentioning about these banners is the fact that they are 10 mercy pulls compared to the regular five mercy pulls that we've been having for a very long time. That along with a couple other things ends up being deciding factors as to whether or not, first of all, it's worth pulling for, okay? Um, so before I even go into my thought process, just know right now that because the fact it's a 10 mercy pull, you literally have to have at least around 30,000 uh, jewels in order to even guarantee mercy one of the foretellers. Uh, so if you're not even anywhere near close to that, <laughs> especially if you already spent all 13,000 of our free jewels that we just got recently too, then before I even say anything about my thoughts about the banners, you're better off just skipping these medals. Aside from the fact that obviously you don't have enough jewels to mercy them in the first place, uh, it's also partially because of the fact that these medals, although they are very good and they are tier eight and seven star, they are not the most game breaking medals in the world. Realistically, if you just wanna save your jewels, you can very easily just skip these medals and not even have to worry about them, uh, solely because of the fact that as long as you have a Kyrie or Shion EX Plus, then to be honest, you don't actually need these medals. Uh, the only thing worth mentioning about these medals is the fact that they currently are the best AOE medals in the entire game as of right now, uh, especially because of the fact that they come as their seven star version too. Uh, but aside from that, there's honestly not too much to benefit from getting these medals. In terms of modes like PVP and such, uh, for multipliers, they're actually not the greatest multipliers. Like you have to actually, like there's a ton of medals above them before you even reach the new foreteller medals. Uh, like they're really low down. Even Lingering Will has a higher multiplier than the new foreteller medals. But again, keep in mind that these are in terms of modes like PVP. Uh, like I mentioned before, they are the best AOE medals in the entire game as of right now. And like I've been saying for a, quite a while now, uh, with the direction the game is going in, uh, it's becoming a little bit more apparent to me that having at least a few really good uh, seven star AOE medals uh, seems to be becoming more and more apparent, uh, especially within s modes such as like raid bosses, for example. Because of the fact that raid bosses just have so much health now these days, uh, on top of the fact they only have one or two limbs, you basically need to be able to hit all of the limbs uh, while hitting the raid boss at the exact same time. So that way you can take out the limbs in the process of you still doing damage to the raid boss. And this is not even covering other modes such as like Colosseum PvE for example. But yeah, in general, if you are lacking in any really decent uh, seven star AOE medal as of right now, the four tellers are right there ready to use in case you really want it. Again though, keep in mind that like it is 30k jewels in order to mercy pull one of them. If you don't have the jewels for that, you're probably better off just guaranteeing your copy of Kyrie Shion EX Plus first uh, before anything else, just because of the fact that those medals alone uh, will set up any other hard hitter that comes along down the road. Whereas in this case, um, if you don't have a Kyrie Shion EX Plus already and you try going for these, sure, they're good alone, uh, but they're not always gonna necessarily be be able to work on every single type of keyblade for example compared to Kyrie Shion EX Plus that you can literally slap on every single keyblade. So basically in general what I'm trying to say is that for the most part most of you guys don't need these medals at all whatsoever. Uh, your main priority is to get Kyrie Shion EX Plus first and then you can worry on about the foretellers. Uh, if you already have a Kyrie Shion EX Plus you could possibly consider the foretellers but just keep in mind you don't actually need to have the foretellers there's nothing game breaking about these foretellers that like makes me go like i have to have these uh now if you are lacking in seven star aoe medals maybe you want to start considering these uh if you have a close amount of jewels and since we're on the topic let's go ahead and talk about real quick which of the foretellers that I believe to be the best of the foretellers. Like if I had to absolutely choose amongst all the foretellers, which ones to get, which one would I go for? Now I'm aware uh, there's already been a couple videos here and there by others in the community who've, probably, who've 
made videos about talking about this topic, which of the four towers are better. I'm willing to guess that most of them either picked Ira or Ava, one of the two, just mostly because of the fact that that's what's most of the community is basically saying. In my opinion though, I actually believe that this time it's not Ava or Ira at all whatsoever. In my opinion, the best medals, four teller medals out of the five is actually going to be uh, MV, Gula, and Ased this time. Um, and this is specifically because of the fact that their abilities last for three turns whereas Ava and Ira do not. In case you're confused as heck as to why exactly I mean this, let me go ahead and quickly break this down for you. So when it comes to medals in general, uh, one of the biggest things that I tend to look for as a veteran player is whether or not, or even just a player in general, is whether or not the medal that I'm pulling for, especially for such a high investment jewel costing medals like these that cost 30k to get, uh, one of the things that I look for is how versatile are these medals? Like, can I use these very often? Uh, for all sorts or as many like scenarios as possible, which in this case is going to include modes like PvP. So in this aspect, what exactly do these four towers provide? Okay, uh, HD Ava, let's take a look at her real quick, okay? Uh, HD Ava, most of the four towers are pretty much the exact same thing with just slight minute differences between each of them, right? HD Ava, uh, the main thing that she provides is the fact that she's the only one that has a plus seven, uh, PSM defense and minus three PSM strength debuff uh, with overwrite for her. In regards to Ava, personally, I don't find the plus seven PSM defense uh, buff or the PSM strength debuff, the minus three, to honestly be that great. And here's a couple reasons why. The minus three PSM strength debuff isn't that fantastic. Just because of the fact that it's only one additional uh, strength debuff compared to what a Kyrie EX Plus or Shion EX Plus already provides, okay? Uh, so in that aspect, it's it's like, eh, do I really want to sunk 30,000 jewels for this where I can get Kyrie Shion EX Plus for 15k instead? Literally half the price and those medals are much more versatile uh, utility-wise. And then we have the plus 7 uh, PSM defense buff that she provides as well. Um, and in this case, I still don't think that's that great because as any uh, veteran or high ranking player knows by this point already in the game, attribute defense honestly doesn't really matter too much. What really matters when it comes to defense is the general defense buffs, okay? That is what makes a defensive metal. Sure, PSM defense can help a little bit, uh, but if you're thinking about this even in terms of like PVP, for example, that honestly doesn't matter uh, just because of the fact that debuffing <laughs> uh, PSM defense is the easiest thing in the world. Uh, there are like two or three times as many medals in the game that debuff attribute defense than there are game, uh, medals that debuff uh, general defense instead. Heck, even with just one cast of say uh, Prime Riku versus Roxas, that medal alone or like Prime Illustrated Axel, those medals alone already completely debuff it. Now granted, you're probably going to be using these guys the most in AoE type purposes, so not PvP. Uh, but even then, the enemies are so strong right now that you literally need to be running either a full turtle setup in order to tank anything right now. Uh, otherwise, they're kind of useless. So that's kind of why I don't believe HD Ava is really that great as what I'm assuming most people are going to be saying. Now, in regards to HD Era EX Plus, uh, the main thing that differentiates bet uh, him between everyone else is the fact that uh, he actually debuffs the opponent's uh, PSM defense by seven. Okay, so you actually deep completely debuffs all defense by minus seven, which is actually pretty good. And he also provides the 120% guilt buff. All right. Now, starting off with the guilt buff, as I have mentioned multiple times here on the channel already, in, in regards to metals that tend to provide guilt buffs, the guilt buff isn't really that impactful. I'm sure it will actually end up being a little bit better in the most highest tier of setups, okay? But again, like I said, that's only in the highest tier of setups. Like you legitimately need to have a perfect a seven star setup already utilizing like tier seven and eight medals, maybe even six medals uh, before you start actually getting any real value out of ER EX Plus. So the 120%, although it is good, it's not, it's not that good, okay? It's not like game breaking or anything. It's just more like a small, uh, marginal benefit. Um, now in terms of his uh, 
minus seven PSM debuff, um, that's actually really good, okay? Especially for uh, multi-attribute keyblades like Starlight, uh, Stroke of Midnight and such. Uh, you don't have to worry about the attributes that they're using at all whatsoever because it'll just fully debuff them and you just have to worry about uh, filling out the rest of the attribute buffs that your other metals are going to provide. The only problem I have at Era is the fact that his ability only lasts one turn compared uh, to three like the others. If it was three, then I would by far go after Ira, but since it's not three and it's only one, his usefulness is basically on the same level as Ava. Like, it's good, but it's nothing... It's nothing groundbreaking that I'm just like, I have to have HD Era. Era and Ava are basically the type of metals that are are really good, but you would only pretty much mainly use them for uh, outside of PvP, basically. And after saying that, that basically leads into uh, HD Envy, Gula, and a set EX Plus, okay? And let me explain why I believe these ones are actually the best out of the five. Uh, and that is mainly, strictly, going to be because of the fact that they do last for three turns and they have overwrite. Alright, so here's why I think these three metals are by far the best out of the five of them. I already kind of mentioned it a little bit here and there beforehand, but one of the main things that I look for in terms of metals before I pull from and stuff is how useful is this metal going to be for me uh, after I get it. And we already mentioned that Ava and Ira, although they're really good, you would only really use them outside of PvP and probably most likely not necessarily for uh, single target type things. They're mostly for AoE type stuff. However, HDS said Gula and MVEX Plus can actually be used in PvP specifically because of the fact that they have an overwrite that lasts for three turns, okay? Now granted, their buffs and debuffs only affect their respective attribute. So like a said, for example, uh, on Stroke of Midnight, what would only provide power uh, buffs and debuffs, um, which obviously would affect these the speed and magic slots within the Keyblade for Stroke of Midnight, for example. However, what I have to say about that is that that doesn't matter just because of the fact that attribute buffs and debuffs are by far the easiest things in the game right now to get. <laughs> so even if you were to run like an HD uh, a said EX Plus, for example, on Stroke of Midnight, uh, that doesn't matter just because of the fact you can easily run along with that a prime Riku versus Roxas, for example, and provide the rest of your magic buffs and debuffs. Boom. Like, that doesn't matter. <laughs> and uh, the way that the game works is that it applies uh, buffs and debuffs. It applies the abilities first before you actually do damage with the metal. So you'll actually receive the magic buffs and debuffs from Riku and Roxas. Uh, before Riku and Roxas actually does damage. So in terms of a PvP aspect, the main benefit about uh, these guys, these three metals, is the fact that they provide full strength buffs and full defense debuffs for three turns. Now, the strength buffs is probably going to be the one thing that you might have be a little bit finicky about uh, trying to maintain uh, throughout the course of three turns for a PvP. Although the main kicker here is the minus seven uh, defense debuffs they provide for three turns. And I'm, I'm planning to make a video covering this topic fairly soon because ever since they announced how PvP was going to work, I kind of already knew the direction that they're going to start taking medals in uh, in terms of PvP, which is basically going to be the fact that they're going to be releasing more and more medals as time goes on. And we kind of already started seeing them a little bit with the organization medals. Uh, we're going to start seeing more and more medals that have multi-turn abilities, specifically specifically because of the fact they can now be actually utilized more effectively within PvP. And the four towers are a perfect example of that, um, like I said in V and Gula. Uh, and one of the things that you can actually do with these type of medals, and I'm going to quickly draw on the screen real quick. So let's say this is kind of similar to like my uh, PvP competitive guides. All right. This is round one. This is round two in PvP. This is round three. All right. Uh, one of the strategies that are starting to appear slowly more and more often now these days, especially with the appearance of Dominate EX Plus, is the fact that let's say let's say we're attacking. Okay. We're attacking. And what you can do is that you can use your Ased, Gula, or Envy right here in round one, turn one, okay? They have full uh, defense debuffs, okay? Full defense debuffs. And you have full strength uh, buffs, all right? 
we'll put an S for strength. This is a D, by the way. So, this is going to carry over into your other turns. Now, because of metals, of course, like Mrs. Incredible, uh, even strength debuffers like Zexion Plus, for example, the, the strength buffs might be a little finicky. You might have to manage that a little bit. But most people are not running uh, legitimate defense buffs within their setups. Uh, if they do, it's only within the turtle setups, and that is it. Okay. Um, in which case, that these defense debuffs are actually going to completely carry over all throughout all three of these setups. So one of the things that you can do to take advantage of this basically is the fact that because they have full debuffs the entire time and metals like Kyrie Shion EX Plus do not touch your defense <laughs> as you as the player, like you using a def uh, Kyrie Shion EX Plus will not affect the fact that you have minus seven defense still. You can actually, as an attacker, run full attack metals in rounds two and three now for the most part uh, to do even more damage than you actually would if you're trying to run a normal type of setup like like a Kyrie EX plus right here and stuff okay all right a lot and then you follow the typical uh, setup rules in a setup you can legitimately run full damage metals like Bob and Jack Jack Soren Simba uh, Psyx plus he's actually a really good candidate because he also makes sure that you still have max strength buffs too um, you can start running full-on more sh like damage metals pure damage metals to do more damage This is the major reason I know this was a sloppy like drawn put together drawing uh, But this is the main reason why I believe a said Gula Envy are actually the best out of the five Just because of the fact they can they have that ability to do that because their abilities last for three turns Whereas Avent Envy do not uh, it's even better too because of the fact that uh, you can still use them outside of PvP too. <laughs> so they're both good for PvP and outside of PvP. Whereas Ava and Ira are only actually useful outside of PvP. On top of the fact, like I mentioned earlier, uh, even if you use like a single attribute foreteller, like I said, on a multi-attribute Keyblade, like Shrook of Midnight, it's not a big deal, because there's plenty of metals in the game already, especially with Prime Metals, that fulfill the rest of the attribute buffs and debuffs for you, uh, right away. So it's like, it, that doesn't matter. All in all, this is basically what I have to think about the foreteller metals, guys. Again, I don't think they're the greatest metals in the world. You don't actually need them. You can perfectly, you, um, you can skip them just fine and you will be okay. Uh, and I'm, to be honest, I'm still more or less expecting some even more OP metals to come out after the foretellers go away. Whether or not this is actually going to happen is still up in the air. Um, and worst case scenario, if nothing actually comes out afterwards that's game breaking or whatever, or like, you know, the big behemoth in the room. The worst case scenario, I just saved a ton of jewels and I can use them for something else that comes out down the line. I don't know if they're going to be coming out with more 10 Mercy Pool releases uh, from now on or not. So that's something worth considering. But anyways, that's it for today, guys. Let me know what your thoughts are about the subject down in the comment section down below. I love the foretellers a lot, but uh, as of right now, I'm finding it a little bit hard to actually completely justify me pulling for one of them. But other than that, uh, if you enjoyed the episode, please leave a like and subscribe and hit that bell button. It's the best way to know when I upload more videos such as this one. My name is Brian from Kinematsu Cross Nation, and I will see you guys in the next video. Peace.